Praise God. We're the salt of the world. That means that you sting, not stink, sting. That you're a preservative <laughs> of righteousness, amen? <laughs> and that you're a good taste. <laughs> Sweet aroma to the Lord. What an awesome day it is already. Let me tell you, to start off in God's presence and get filled and dressed and possessed, I love it. There isn't anything that can fulfill than his presence. But there's something that you and I must do. Seek with all of our heart. Two things the Holy Spirit said to me while we were worshiping. Number one, he said, I'm exposing and separating. I'm exposing and separating. See, there are individuals that are just rebellious. Amen? But he's not looking at that. He's exposing in his own church those that have a loyal heart and those that don't. He said there are those who do good, but they're not loyal. Their heart isn't loyal to me. And the Word of God says it. He was searching the kings out and so forth. And he said there was a king that was doing good. He did all the things that God asked him to do, but he didn't have a loyal heart to him. His heart was still loyal to his old ways. It was still loyal to certain pagan rituals. His heart was not loyal. He did not have a loyal heart. And that's what God is saying. I'm exposing right now. In fact, I'm even removing right now. There will be those that don't have a loyal heart, loyal heart to my house, loyal heart to my will, loyal heart to my kingdom, loyal heart to my presence, loyal heart to my finances, loyal heart to everything I do. Those are those whose hearts are truly not loyal. And he said, I'm going to begin to separate them and expose them. And out of nowhere, I don't understand, but anyways, he shared with me something strange. And he, and he showed me when he was walking on the earth. And I thought I'd just share this. And when he was walking on the earth, one of the things that I said, you know, Lord, I said, they really didn't know who you were. He said, I know. He said, even the powers of darkness, I blinded them, just like they blinded my children in the garden. I thought, oh. You remember, if Satan knew who he truly was, he wouldn't have killed him. But God allowed it. So even the whole time, even the demons weren't sure who he was. There was no certainty of all the demonic forces that were on our earth or who Jesus was. He didn't allow it to be done. And if you remember the two dudes, those disciples that were going with Jesus on the way to Damascus, and they were talking about how, what happened to Jesus and so forth, and here's Jesus walking with them and says, Hey, dudes, what's going on? What are you guys talking about? And they started talking about all the stuff that Jesus suffered. But there was something burning inside their heart. But see, they didn't, many people don't believe. And when he finally sat down and broke bread with them, then he exposed himself, of course, then he departed. But we are in a time right now, one of the things, all of this is occurring because there's something lacking. There's lacking in individual's life. And he said to me, they really don't know my love. They don't know my love. And he said, there is the love that's of the world, known as lust, but there's divine love. And divine love is perfect love. And, and there's a way that we access and partake of it. Second Peter chapter 1. Divine love. Oh, hallelujah. Second Peter chapter 1. Now remember the earth is a representation of location. The world is associated with system. So there's the world system and there's the earth. The earth is its location. Amen? Hallelujah. 
And verse 2, 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 2, let's speak it. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord and his divine power has given to us. His divine power has given to us. So do we have divine power? Yeah, if you're baptized in the Holy Ghost. Has given to all things that pertain to life and godliness. So everything that's available for me and you to sustain a righteous life is available to us. Amen? Through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceedingly and great promise, precious promises, that through these precious promises and the knowledge of them, you may be partakers of the divine nature. Having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Now, where is the divine nature? It's in you. Amen? So he's saying, look it. In this, now the lust of the world, lust is associated with living under Satan's torment or trickery. That's lust. Living under Satan's torment or trickery. He's saying, through divine nature, the nature of the creator, we are able to escape the corruption in the world system controlled by deception, fear, and lust. I'm going to say that again. So through partaking of the divine nature, we are able to escape the corruption in the world system. It's controlled by deception, fear, and lust. Or what we might even, all of this is false love. Lust is false love, right? With what? Destructive desires. The love that is from God is called divine. It's from the divine nature that you and I partake of. The love of the world is called lust. Because it's living under satanic torment or trickery. Is everybody okay? So what's happening is that you and I are partaking in the divine nature. We are escaping these things. Why? Because from the divine nature, we are feeding from the divine nature. And in this, we're able to receive love from God. In verse 5, it says, But also for this very reason, giving all the diligence, add to your faith virtue, to virtue knowledge, to knowledge self-control, which means control over self, and to self-control perseverance, to perseverance godliness. To godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, what? Love. Love. For this, for these things are yours and abound. You will be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he who lacks these things is short-sighted even blindness and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins. Therefore, brethren, be more diligent to make your call and election sure. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. For so an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Again, God's love. Remember, the earth is the location and its system, it's in, in the world system is what rules this earth, is ruled by deception. Remember, deception is his greatest power, and, uh, his greatest weapon, and fear is the power. So when you and, I are, you and I are God's love, we're living above, amen? We're living above, we have a life that is above violent earth. Does everybody understand it? L-O-V-E. A life, life, oh, living outside, I'm sorry. So we are living outside violent earth or a life outside of the violence of earth. How many of all earth is violent? Amen. It's destructive. It's run by lust. So love is living outside or a life that is outside of violent earth. Everyone say it with me. Uh, love is life outside violent earth. Amen. In 1 John chapter 2. This is divine love. 
Life outside violent earth. Love. Why? Because we're not of the earth, right? We're no longer up here anymore. When you are baptized, filled with the Spirit, and you are feeding, seeking, and we'll talk about this. See, you and I have a choice of what we partake of every day. In 1 John chapter 2, verse 15, we've heard this plenty of times. It says what? Do not love the world <laughs> or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Why? What's in him? The lust of the world. For all that is in it, in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away of it, and the lust of it. But he who does the will of God does what? Abides forever. Little children, it is the last hour. And as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming even now, many Antichrists have come. By which we know that it is the last hour. They went out from us. Why did they go out from us? Because love hasn't been perfected. They're not walking in a divine love. They're still walking in carnal love. Lust of the love. Which is self. Love of self. Amen. For if they had been with us, they would have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest. That none of them were of us. But you have an anointing from the Holy One. And you know these things. Simple. You know these things. The love of the world is lust. He said the love of the Father, which is divine, it's the life um, outside of uh, violent earth, right? Now, life. What is life? Life is living, amen, and future eternity. Why? Everything is associated with not living from this earth. We're living from the future to the present. It is the life and future eternity. That's what life is. Again, this is where the enemy comes and begins to manipulate, compromise, and steal our identity, who we are. When we begin to compromise these things, we begin to lose who we are. We are sojourners in this world, passing through. But you and I were taken out of the world, but left in the world. So we were taken out, but left. So we're still associated in this place to expose the world system that is corrupt. That's our job now, to expose its corruption. Amen? Expose its wickedness and evilness. Lust. Heck, it's the key factor that causes everything. Lust is the desire. It was a key factor in the garden in sexual misconduct. Lust. You know, many people can't continue because of the lust of self. So they compromise. They fall away. You know, one of the greatest ploys of the enemy is to isolate individuals so he can impart their doct his doctrine. Do you ever notice that people become more isolated, become more goofy? Romans 7. They begin to seek out knowledge instead of God's presence. Romans 7, 15. Living under satanic trickery is lust. It's tormenting. Why? Because individuals can never get fulfilled. They're always looking, just like an addict that is living under satanic trickery big time. It doesn't matter how much dope you do, you're not going to get fulfilled. Hallelujah. Romans 7, 15. For what I am doing, I do not understand. For what I will to do, that I do not practice. But what I hate, that I do. If then I do what I will not to do, I agree with the law that it is good. But now it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. Now you've got to remember, you still have an old nature, carnal man called the flesh. That is a presence of darkness. 
Amen? It is a presence of evil. The only day you're going to really get rid of that is the day you leave. Now, there's outside forces, the demonic, and then you got an old man. But the word says that be led by the Spirit, you will crucify him. You will shut him up. For I know that in me that is in my flesh, which is the old man, nothing good dwells. For to will is present with me, but to how to perform what is good I do not find. For the good that I will to do, I do not do. But the evil I will not to do, that I practice. Now, if I do what I will not to do, it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. I find in the law that evil is present with me, the one who wills to do good. For I delight in the law of God according to the inward man. But I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind and my thoughts, and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, rebellion, or disobedience, which is in my members. Listen, Paul was figuring this out. Look at Paul was baptized, filled with the Holy Ghost. But he realized that there was still a problem with the old man. But there's something he realized very powerful. He said, which one am I going to feed off of? Am I going to feed off of that? I will become that. Whatever I feed off of, I will come. Whatever I seek, I will feed off of. Whatever I draw from, I will feed off of. Then he says in verse 24, he says, Oh, wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. What's that? The divine nature. So then with the mind, my thoughts, I myself serve the will of God or the law of God. But with my flesh and my lustful desires, I serve sin. Powers of darkness. So Paul was realizing, man, in my flesh is a presence of lust. It is constant, but the divine love is constant also. The one that I choose to draw from is the one I will express. See, so there is not only an outward battle, there is an inward battle, isn't there? That's why it's important to be filled with the Spirit. The more you are filled with the Spirit, the further separation that is between the old man and the new man. But there's something you must do. Seek with all of your heart. See, so many times people are still more loyal to the things of the world than they are truly to God and God, the things of God. It's James chapter 1. Oh, they do all the good things. You know, one day the Lord said to me, yes, they pray, but they don't hear. They come to him every day and pray, 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 but they don't hear what he's saying. They're not willing to receive his correction. James 1. Hallelujah. Praise God. Oh, happy days. In verse uh, 12. Blessed. What's the opposite of blessed? Cursed. Blessed is the man who endures the temptations from the evil one. For when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Now, you are not only being tempted by outside forces, amen, but you're being tempted by the old man inside. That's why it's important, because there's songs of deliverance. Deliverance from what? The old man. You have a free will to choose from the divine nature or the fallen nature. Which one you feed off is what you will express and what you will become. Verse 13. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he is what? Drawn or drawing from what? The old man. Drawing away from his what? By his own desires and enticed. In other words, your own desires are the old man's desires. You and I have a new creation, and our desires should be coming from him and not our old man anymore. These desires are lustful, aren't they? And when desire has conceived, it's come agreement, 
it gives birth to the presence of evil. And sin, when it is full grown, brings forth death. Do not be deceived, my beloved brethren. <laughs> Don't be deceived. Every good gift and every precious gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. Glory. Again, in this we see something very, very powerful. We see that blessed is everyone who rejects the desires of the sinful nature of lust, but draws or feeds and seeks the divine nature of God. How do we provide and supply the divine nature of God in us? By feeding the divine nature with the word of God in the presence of God. We maintain the divine nature to lead. Again, the greatest, one of the greatest deceptions, of course, they empowered this through all of these lies and deceptions of these plagues and all this other garbage to prevent people from assembling. That's why the Lord said, forsake not to assemble. Why? Right after it says, and if you sin willfully. Why? Because of the lack of assembling. Lack of assembling. People struggle all the time. Why? Because it's the lack of God's presence. That's where the struggle comes from. Every answer is in God's presence. But their heart is not loyal to the presence of God. It's more loyal to the other things. Hallelujah. James 4. And the good things and not having a loyal heart is dangerous. Can God trust someone that does the good things but doesn't have a loyal heart? No. Doesn't he say he searches the heart out? Why? The heart is the core of what? All desire. So if the heart is the core of all desire, he knows what your desires are. And if they're not loyal to his desires, he can't trust you. And you'll stay in that cycle until you die. You'll never advance. James 4, verse 7. Let's speak it. Therefore, do what? Submit to God. Resist the devil, and he will what? Flee from you. Draw near. Feed off of. Seek. Draw near to God, and he will what? Draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts. You double-minded. <laughs> what? Well, they're taking feeding from both. They're unstable. Lament and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned into mourning and your glory to gloom. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he will what? Lift you up. He will do what? He will lift you up. Wow. Awesome. What you draw or feed or seek, you will become. Lust of the world or love of God, one or the other. In Psalm 37, and what is the perfect love of God? It's called divine love. Psalm 37. Many people are unevenly yoked with individuals with an unloyal heart. Oh, they go to church, they tithe, they do all the right things, but their heart's not loyal. Psalm 37, verse 3. Why? Because the divine love is not preeminence. Is everybody okay? Y'all quite quiet this morning. Y'all right? <laughs> Praise God. Verse, what I say, three? Trust in the Lord and do what? Good. Dwell in the land and feed on his what? In other words, you are drawing from him. Delight yourself also in the Lord. And he shall give you the what? The desires of your heart. In other words, as you feed on him, Amen. You delight yourself in him. He's going to exchange your desires for his desires. Listen, people are trying to quit all kinds of stuff. And they try it in their own strength. Man, if you, they'll just throw themselves in the presence of God. 
head first. And just keep pressing them through, pressing through, pressing through. The next thing they're finding, oh man, I don't smoke no more. I don't even have a desire for it. I don't, do, I don't drink no more. I don't even have a desire. I don't do dope no more. I don't like sin anymore. In fact, I don't like you anymore. You know? As you look in the mirror, <laughs> I don't like you anymore. <laughs> You'll find that everything begins to take away. But to try to do it in your own strength just promotes the flesh. You will never be free. You will never stop touching unclean things <laughs> until you begin to partake and feed off of him, his presence, seek him, and begin to live off of the divine nature instead of the carnal nature. Which one you choose to every single decision and choice will affect your next decision and your life. Glory. Is everybody okay? Oh, it's getting good now. All right, verse 5. Commit your way to the Lord and trust also in him, and he shall bring it to what? Pass. You know how many times people bring their own things to pass? Because <laughs> God ain't doing it. Because he refuses to because it's flesh. He shall bring forth your righteousness as the light and your justice as the noonday. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. And do not fret because of him who prospers in his way, because of the man who brings wicked schemes to pass. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Do not fret. It only causes harm. Feed. Draw from his divine character from his presence from his words from his promises or to rest endure and trust and be obedient amen then we will have abundant peace there will not be fear there why because perfect love is removing all that fear matthew 6 people wouldn't have to be concerned about denying themselves picking up the cross and following if they would just feed off of the divine nature. Making the choice of which one. Why? Because God will give you the desires. He'll impart in you automatically to deny yourself. Why? Because if you're denying yourself, you're denying your flesh. You're denying the old man and its lusts and its desires. You won't be promoting yourself. You won't be protecting yourself. You'll be protecting his image, likeness, and character in you. You know, why do people get in arguments? Because they're just trying to promote themselves. Why do people get in the flesh? Seeing which flesh is stronger. Arguments always seem to escalate unless somebody has the power enough to turn away and walk away. You know, we have a teaching that says don't go there. Because those are boundaries. The divine nature will prevent you from going over those boundaries. But once you cut loose of the divine nature and feed off of the uh, fallen nature, man, you're over those boundaries full blown. Amen? You're a nuclear reactor. Matthew 6, verse 31. That's the difference why people react or respond. Why are people reacting? Man, they get on Facebook and Fleshbook and react like morons. No divine love. Does somebody understand that? Because if there's divine love, there's divine character. Hallelujah. Verse 31, Matthew 6. And how do you maintain it? Assemble, feed, fellowship, worship. Amen. Therefore, do not what? Worry. Is worry fear? Yeah. Don't fear. Why? Saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For after all these things, the heathen seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all of these things. But seek first the kingdom of God and his what? Righteousness, which is in his presence. And all of these things are going to be given to you. Therefore, don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Don't fear, seek, but do what? Seek, draw, draw near, feed from his promises, his words. 
His presence and His divine character and the divine love will be manifested in you. And you will not fear. Because see, fear nullifies the divine nature. Divine anything. Fear loves to de uh, destroy that. Now, there's a reverence of fear. Amen. You're not going to challenge God and put your hand in the fire and say, I ain't fearing. You're going to burn your hand. I mean, that's, you know, we don't challenge God in those things. In 1 John chapter 4. Divine love is perfect love. Comes from the divine nature. How do you maintain a divine nature? You feed off of him. What you choose to eat, you become. Amen? It's called deceptive food, isn't it? First John chapter 4 and verse 7. People don't realize that just because nothing is happening right now because of the things that are done. You know, I mean, some people eat terrible. Well, I feel okay today. Yeah, wait, wait down the road. Could be 10, 20 years. It catches up until you change that diet. You change those habits. Amen? Like I shared before, you eat enough Twinkies, you become a Twinkie. I mean, you eat enough granolas, you become a granola. <laughs> but what you eat is what you become. What you speak is what you eat. Amen? So what you're feeding off of is either promoting the divine nature or the fallen nature. So your inner man is looking to be fed all the time. I mean, what did Jesus say to Peter, even though Peter blew it? He denied Jesus three times. He said, if you love me, Peter. Do you love me, Peter? Yes, Lord. Feed my sheep. Everything he talked about was feeding. Feeding. Look what was in the garden. What did the Lord say? Don't eat this. Eat these. What do you feed off is what you are. Hallelujah. Verse 7. Are we there yet? Beloved. Let us what? Love. Love. Living outside violent earth. A life outside of violent earth. Love one another, for love is of God. And everyone who loves is born of God and what? Knows God. Come on, let's speak it. He who does not love does not know God. For God is love. In this, the love of God was manifested toward us. The love of God was manifested in Jesus. That's God's love right in front of us. That God has sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. And this the love of God was manifested toward us that God has sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. Again. And in this love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought to love one another. No one has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God abides in us, and his love has been perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him, and he in us, because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and testified that the Father has sent the Son as the Savior of the world. Whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God abides in him, and he in God. You know, people misuse the scripture. Oh, Jesus is my Lord and Savior. And they think they got the divine nature flowing through them. Wrong. Because they're still feeding off the things that are unclean. The divine nature has never given an opportunity to become fully matured. Everybody got it? See, so there's, it's, that's why people, some people are still babies. They're still crybabies. They can't fight. Because the divine nature is not fully matured yet. Oh, glory. <sighs> is everybody okay? That's a few more. We're going to get there. <laughs> Woohoo! Are you ready? Verse uh, 
16. And we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love, and he who abides in love abides in God and God in him. Love has been perfected among us in this that we may have the boldness in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear. There is no fear. There is no fear in love. But perfect love casts out fear. Because fear involves what? Torment. That's lust. Living under satanic torment or treachery or trickery. Or but he who fears has not been made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. If someone says, I love God and hates his brother, he's an idiot. He's a liar. For he who does not love his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he hasn't seen? And this is the commandment we have from him, that he who loves God must love his brothers also. Love versus lust is a choice that we draw from. Sinful nature or divine nature. 1 Corinthians 13. It's, it's amazing how it's almost like a ripple effect or a domino effect of everything. But it always goes back to the Lord's presence. Always. 1 Corinthians 13. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians 13, verse 1. Let's speak it together. Though I speak with tongues and of men and angels and have not love, I have become a sounding brass or clanging cymbal. As though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge. And though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains but have not love, I am what? Nothing. Now, does everybody understand? These are good, doing good things, right? But the heart is not loyal. Why? Because the divine love is what brings a heart loyal. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burnt, but I have not love, it profits me nothing. There's going to a lot of people be a little bit upset when I find out they haven't been accounted for nothing. All their lives. All their works. It was to build treasures in heaven, but never out of a loyal heart. It'll be counted for nothing. Verse 4. Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. It is not puffed up. Does not behave rudely. Does not seek its own. Is not provoked or, or reactor. Thinks no evil. Does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Does not re uh, bears what? All things. Believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. But whether there are prophecies, they're going to fail. Whether there are tongues, they're going to cease. Whether there's knowledge, it will vanish away, all of these things. For we know in part and we prophesy in part, but when that which is perfected has come, when the Lord has come, then that which is in part will be done away with. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child, but when I became a man or mature and allowed the divine nature to take a place of maturity, I put away these childish things. For now we see in the mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know just as I am also known. And now abide faith, hope, and love, these three. But the greatest of these is what? Love. A life outside of violent earth. God is life. Amen? Hallelujah. That's inside future existence. A life inside future existence. That's what we want, life. We want a, a life that's off this earth, but a life that's in the future of God. So we leave from the future to the present. We don't give a hoot about what's going on. Amen? We are heaven bound. God knows exactly how to take care of everything. If we we'll allow him to have the last say. He's just asking you to do certain things, certain prayers. Not the lust prayers, the love prayers, the warfare prayers. He wants us to intercede and rescue as many souls as possible. He does the cleaning up. We're to do the catching. Amen? Zephaniah. 
Is everybody there? Ooh, number, verse 1, whoa. That doesn't mean horsey hold up. That's not a whoa horse. Amen? Whoa means without eternity. Whoa to her who is what? Rebellious and polluted. Why are they polluted? Touching unclean things. People are polluting themselves from their own mouth. If you can see spiritually, it's like they have cake all over their face. Chocolate even. It's polluted all from the words. Woe to her who is rebellious and polluted to the oppressing city. She has not obeyed his voice. She has not received correction. She has not trusted in the Lord. She has not drawn near to her God. Well, if she would have, she'd have drawn, things would have changed, right? Her princes in her midst are roaring lions. Her judges are evening wolves that leave not a bone till morning. Her prophets are insolent, treacherous people. Her priests have polluted the sanctuary. They have done violence to the law. The Lord is righteous in her midst. He will do no right, unrighteousness. Every morning he brings his justice to light. He never fails. But the unjust knows no shame. No trust, no obedience, no love, no seeking, no drawing, no feeding, no turning, no re response, no shame, only react. No divine love. Psalm 5. What produces a loyal heart? Divine love. That's why we got to come in and get touched. We got to allow God to touch our hearts all the time. Amen. You touch his heart, he touches yours. And that way there's conviction. There's counsel. There's correction. There's change. Because now you're feeding off, his, off of his presence. You're feeding off his promises, his word. You're seeking him. Seeking and drawing is an exchange made. You're becoming more and more in his likeness. And the divine nature is maturing more and more in you. In verse 1 of uh, Psalm 5, let's speak it. Give ear to my words, O Lord. Consider my meditation. Give heed to the voice of my cry, my King and my God. For to you I will pray. My voice you shall hear in the morning, O Lord. In the morning I will direct it to you, and I will look up. For you are not a God who takes pleasure in wickedness, nor shall evil dwell with you. The boastful shall not stand in your sight. You hate all workers of iniquity. You shall destroy those who speak falsehood. The Lord abhors the bloodthirsty and deceitful man. But as for me, I will come into your house in a multitude of your mercy. In reverence or fear of you, I will worship you toward your holy temple. Lead me, O Lord, in your righteousness because of my enemies. Make your way straight before my face. For there is no faithfulness in their mouth. Their inward part is destruction. Their throat is an open tomb. They flatter with their tongues. Pronounce them guilty, O God, and let them fall by their own counsels. Cast them out in the multitude of their transgressions, for they have rebelled against you. One of the things the Lord was sharing with me, he says, so many people have trampled my counsel. They've trampled my counsel. Verse 11. But let all those rejoice who put their trust in you. Let them ever shout for joy because you defend them. Let those also who love your name be joyful in you. For you, O Lord, will bless the righteous with favor. You will surround him as with a shield. For it is written, for it is spoken, and so shall it be. What a powerful prayer. Amen. Favor. We want God's favor. Everybody wants God's favor. Amen. And there's nothing wrong with asking for God's favor. But you're not going to get his favor. Listen, he'll meet your need. But that's all he'll meet. Until you, be, until you and I decide in that area to where what we're feeding on. He's looking to develop, mature his character, the divine nature in us. In us. Remember, he's not looking for perfection. 
He's looking for your heart. Because he knows the desires. Everything that revolves around our desires. Everything we choose. Everything we refuse has got a desire in it. Everything we touch, everything we agree with or disagree with, there's a desire behind it. And the heart is the core of all desires. And we're either living out of the heart of the flesh or heart of the spirit. But the heart of the spirit is being developed by the divine nature. The divine nature is being developed by the presence of God and promises. And which one you feed off of is which one you will become. Amen? People are still babies. There are so many babies in the world. I mean, I've met Christians that are 30 and 40 years in, in Christianity, and they tell me they're Christians, and I'm like, you're a Christian? And they're still babies, still immature. They don't even know what's going on. They're so bound by fear, it's ridiculous. The enemy has taken so many people out of the faith with seducing and deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons, putting them right into fear. They walk in fear. They walk with rubber gloves on, Darth Vader uniforms, all of that stuff, man. They look like they're going into a, a radioactive disaster area. And they wear those things in their car. Talk about bound. Psalm 16. And we'll close here. Man, I went into one place. This one woman had a mask on. And she had a tube from her mask. And it was put into the side of her pocket where she was breathing fresh air, she said. I'm thinking, this is nuts. She was a woman that worked at U-Haul one time. I went in there. There she was. Thought, Do I need to make a phone call to you or something? You know, so we could talk? Incredible to me. Just incredible. Psalm 16, verse 7. Let's speak it, please. I will bless the Lord who has given me what? Counsel. Did you get counsel today? Yes. My heart always instructs me in the night seasons. I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I won't be what? Moved. Therefore, my heart is glad. My glory rejoices. My flesh will rest in hope. For you will not leave my soul in shield, nor will you allow your Holy One to see corruption. You're his Holy One now. Amen? You will show me the path of life. Ooh, life, living in future existence. In your presence is fullness of joy, all fulfillment. And at your right hand are what? Pleasures forevermore. Oh, sets the Lord before me. His, his presence radiates his love and power. His person filling us with the Holy Spirit, a divine love. As we seek, we draw, and we feed from his divine nature. That's our choice every single day and every moment. Amen? Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We thank you for your divine love. And we thank you, Lord, for a loyal heart to you and to your works. We admit we're nothing without you, so please continue your mercies and grace and bring us to that place where it's no longer we but you. Prepare our hearts for communion, and you may bring up any tithes and offerings that you have. In Jesus' name.